Apple announced their M1 ARM-based chip, along with three new Macs supporting the new architecture. They're available for purchase on Thursday, but how does it affect you for video and photo editing? Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And don't forget, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here. But essentially, all you have to do is watch my channel, or sorry, subscribe to my channel for your chance to win. All right, so I want to talk to you about what caught my attention uh, about this Apple Keynote, and it's the sheer speed increase over previous laptops for photo and video editing. Now, while the MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, and MacBook Air aren't any more expensive, and in the case of the Mac Mini, it's actually $100 cheaper US. But does this extra power mean that you won't need the more expensive MacBook Pro 15-inch or even the 13-inch? Well, Apple did show 8K ProRes video being edited on these Macs. They also showed DaVinci Resolve editing video as well. So I settled in to watch the keynote, all 50 minutes of it, wondering if the extra performance would essentially allow me to spend less. Now, right around the 10 minute mark, Apple takes a deep dive into their architecture. The new processor is actually a system on a chip and this is nothing new. But for a computer, well, it is new. What we're getting here is we get five independent processors that have been working together as separate chips combined into one, and that's the processor, the I.O. chip, the T2 chip, and the memory controller are all in a single processor freeing up space. And along with unified memory architecture, the new M1 processor dramatically improves performance and power efficiency. The M1 uses a five nanometer architecture with up to 16 billion transistors. Well, not up to, with 16 billion transistors. And it has eight cores. Let that sink in for a minute. Eight cores, five nanometer architecture. Now the eight cores aren't all the same. Four of those cores are designed for high performance work while the other four are designed for high efficiency. Now those four high efficiency cores, well, they can deliver the same level of performance that you can get out of a current MacBook Air. Now Apple goes on to discuss how the overall performance per watt and how they're just so much faster. It's better in class um, than any other PC, Windows PC out there by a factor of three to one, and that's significant. But sadly, these lower end, more affordable MacBook Air and MacBook Pro are limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, while this is more than enough for photo video, sorry, photo editing apps, and it's more than sufficient if you're editing 1080p video or short 4K clips, you're gonna be fine. These new machines with the M1 chip, they are really fast, but if you're editing together large files like one hour films, 90 minute films as I do, 16 gigabytes isn't going to be enough. And there's no reason not to allow the option of 32 gigabytes on a MacBook Pro 13 inch, except of course, to push us into the more expensive 15 inch model. And this makes sense. They run a lot cooler. There's gonna be no fans in these, so they're running cooler. You've got more real estate. Certainly we can put in the option for 32 gigs, right? No, because they want to sell us and push, into, push us into that 15 inch model. But for photo editing, the new MacBook Air is perfect for editing on the go. It's very fast and it has a day's worth of battery life and doesn't cost any more than the current models. For video editors, you're just gonna to have to wait for an update to the MacBook Pro 15 inch or even consider the iMac 17 inch. 17 inch? 27 inch, sorry about that. The iMac 27 inch. Oh, and one more thing. I was just talking to you about it not having a fan. I'm really not sure if this is a positive yet or not. Now, Apple does claim that these machines don't get hot and ARM-based processors are known for keeping things cool. But, and this is a big but here, they've shown that it can handle 8K video, ProRes or not in 4K video. Now, if we are, you've got a large file, let's say you've managed to create a 30 minute file, now you're going to export it, you're gonna put it into compressor or something, that computer's gonna be working very hard for let's say 10, 20 minutes or whatever it is. What's it gonna to do to the heat? Are these things gonna be thermal throttling? Is it gonna get hot? And that's what I really wanna know here. I wanna make sure that these things are designed well. And you might say, well, Simon, I'm sure they've tested these out. Well, that's what we thought with the 2016 MacBook Pro 
and its thermal throttling, and then the 2017 model, and then of course the 2018 model, which got even worse. You get 10 cores, but you just weren't getting the performance out of it. So I really do hope that these are going to be just incredible performing units without any overheating. But, you know, I really need to get my hands on it, as I'm sure you would too. Now, that might mean a trip over to the Apple store, but with COVID numbers going up recently, I'm not sure if they're going to allow me to touch the machines. Anyhow, enough of that. I want to take you on a little bit of a behind the scenes. I want to address the current frequency of video production. You might have noticed in the last couple of weeks that I'm producing maybe two to three videos a week. Since May, I'm producing about 1.1 video every day. And it's only in the last two weeks that I've really cut that back. And it's not because I'm sick and tired of doing this. I don't want to have a channel anymore. It's mostly because there really isn't a lot of news out there. Yes, I covered the 50 millimeter and the 70 to 200 millimeter last week. And I probably got more videos out of that than I should have which led me to be a little bit self-reflecting for a little bit. And I came to the realization that I don't want to just put a video out for nothing. I don't... Um, can of Rumors, I think it was last night they put out, or this morning they put out a story about, hey, these are the new lenses coming up in the next little while. But I'd already really covered that about a couple of weeks ago, which was a rehash of a video I covered a few weeks before that. So I really didn't want to touch it. I couldn't see myself providing a lot of extra value. So what I'm looking at doing now is I'm kind of pivoting once again. I'm, I'm only going to focus on news stories that are really interesting enough for you to want to spend your time watching. I'm going to do my weekly Q&A videos. And I'm going to start doing more review videos. So I've got the Ninja, Ninja 5, which should be coming out relatively shortly. I'm also going to be getting the Crane S2. So I'm really excited to be trying these out and doing more reviews and taking a bit more time to put out quality work. Trying to get out news and rumors sometimes is very aggressive. Sometimes I don't have more than about an hour to get the videos shot, published, or edited and published. So that's kind of my plan for the next little while. So you might not see as many videos each week, but I'm still alive. I'm still producing. I'm just kind of changing things. I'm trying to get a little bit more creative. I want to learn a bit more. One of the greatest things about having this channel is how much I've been able to learn over the past year. And I don't want to just keep rehashing and doing the same old thing. I want to see how can I learn, how can I optimize my workflow a little bit more. And I'm going to let a little bit, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag with the Ninja 5. And this shouldn't be a surprise to many of you, but um, at the end of the video, what I'm really saying is that if, if you do a lot of video productions, if you do a lot of videos that are longer in length, like 20 minutes or more, 30 minutes an hour, uh, the, the Ninja 5 is a, a huge time saver. Forget the 10-bit 422. Forget the 4K 60 frames per second. Forget that you can get better quality video outside of what a lot of cameras allow you to do internally. The huge or the, the biggest bang for your buck is the fact that it saves you so much time. There's no more transferring files from the camera to the computer. You can edit right off the SSD. And because you can choose your recording format, which I chose Apple ProRes 422. You can choose Apple RAW. You can use Avid Codex. It's so much faster to edit. So now I actually let my videos render while I'm working on them because by the time I'm finished editing, which doesn't take long, they're already rendered because I'm using Apple ProRes 422, which means my export time is so much quicker. So uh, stay tuned for that video. It's going to be a high level review of the Ninja 5. But it, it, it's really focused on those of you that really, you know, time matters to you. And uh, while well, you can't always raise your prices, if you can cut down the amount of time it takes to produce something, it's essentially like a big pay raise. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win the Cinco Lav S6E and M3 shotgun microphones. I'll be awarding both of these once the channel reaches 20,000 subscribers. And for every 10,000 subscribers from there on out... Up to 100,000, I'll be offering up a better and more expensive prize. Now, when I do get to 100,000 subscribers, I'm going to be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.